Check out this show and other great shows live on your iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry at www.mobileradio.me. Is there a war coming in the Middle East? Are we headed toward a one world government, one world religious system? Will America be attacked again? Do ancient prophetic texts warn of the time we are in? Are we living in the last days, the time of Jacob's trouble, the end of the world as we know it? And what are the increase of UFO sightings? While we may disagree as to what is causing the phenomenon, we can agree that it is real, burgeoning, not going away. Is this the coming great deception that ancient prophecy warns us about? Does time seem to be accelerating? Join me, your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, as we explore these and other riveting and stimulating topics. This is Acceleration Radio. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. And every Thursday, and the last one in August, will be in September next week. Uh, my guest next week will be Richard Grund, talking about his new book, The Supernatural, which I was uh, privileged and honored to write the forward to. So we'll have Richard on next week. But this week we're having Ghani Shimura on talking about, well, a whole variety of, of subjects. But um, I watched part of his um, his two-hour DVD. It's actually on YouTube. It's almost had 900,000 hits, just incredible amount of people that have uh, come on uh, and linked to that and, and checked it out, checked out the movie. It's um, – Sort of a potpourri, he, he's done his homework, let's put it that way. He's looked at my work and Missler's work and Rob Skiba's work and, and Doug Hamp and Tom Warren and, and basically everyone and put together, compiled a lot of information, and I think it's close to two and a half hours, actually. Um, lots of information there. Um, <laughs> so, you, you know, I'd be very interesting to get him on, and he'll be on in a few minutes, and we'll, and we'll talk about it. Folks, I want to tell you that I'm alarmed by the the series of earthquakes that I see happening around the Ring of Fire. We had a huge swarm of earthquakes, I believe, on Sunday night in the Monday in the Los Angeles area. I have been saying now, banging this drum for a while, that I believe the big one is coming. I really hope I'm wrong. But, um, you know, nothing would surprise me at this point when, you, when we get swarms of earthquakes like that in and around Los Angeles. Uh, it, can only, it can be a prelude to something major. Let's hope it's not. You know, who wants to go through that? Meanwhile, uh, once again, on the on the seventh anniversary of the Katrina Category 5 storm, a smaller storm went in, and uh, 25 inches of rain flooding everywhere. It's not going away, is it, folks? It's not. It's, you know, you, you know I, it's, it's amazing. I get emails, and I can't keep up with the emails. I now have 1,511 on open emails. And here's the deal with that, just so you know, if you're listening. Um, you'll get an answer for one or two lines. You start writing me your life story. I mean, you, you do a paragraph, a short paragraph. You start writing like a page, and, and I just, I don't have time. And then what really drives me nuts is when I do answer one, all of a sudden now I have a, pay, a pen pal. And so it, it, the numbers never go down. They go up. So if, if I answer 10 emails, I'll get 10 more back. See what I mean? And there's just me and my wife. There's no staff. There's no intern here monitoring emails, which is why a lot of these things, you know, skip, slip through the cracks. I never get to them. Um, if you send me DVDs or videos, um, I don't have time to watch every video that's sent to me. Same thing. So it's like I'm not going to know everything. I know that. Um, no person ever will. We can't keep up with all the emails and um, – videos and DVDs and, and links. You could spend your whole life just just chasing that stuff down. So if you want to get my attention, brevity is the key. One or two words. Hey, I like check out this link. Tell me what the link's about so I'm not just guessing, okay? Um, that's all I can tell you, folks. That would really be helpful. We are gearing up for the Nephilim Mounds Conference. I want to spend a few minutes talking about that tonight. It's in Nurk, Ahia, September 27th 
20, uh, 28th, 29th, and the 30th, rather, 2012, September 28th, 29th, and 30th. You can go to NephilimMounds.com, NephilimMounds.com, and you can register. Russ Dizdart, Richard Grund, uh, Fritz Zimmerman will be leading a tour of the mounds on Sunday morning, and of course, yours truly. Well, all three of us will be speaking, uh, Desdar, Grund, and myself, and of course, Fritz Zimmerman will be leading a tour of the mounds. Folks, we are headed to Chichen Itza. Um, Larry, Russ, Richard, and of course, myself, I'll be speaking there. Um, we covered your prayers. This is a ritualistic site. We all know that. Just like the September 29th, Nephilim Mount is a ritualistic site. Um, we had an email tonight from a man named Phil who wants to begin to uh, targeting us with prayer, which is fantastic. We could certainly use that, and I will be setting something up. Uh, check the blog, lamarzuli.wordpress.com, lamarzuli.wordpress.com. There is a word that I received several months ago, which I'm going to um, say again and tell you how, how it happened and how I got it because I think it's extremely important that we understand the times in which we're living. It can get weary. The Middle East continues. The war in Syria continues. Israel is surrounded by hostile enemies. Egypt has come under the uh, rule of the Muslim Brotherhood. Iran, with the vitriol towards Israel. Last, last week was Al-Quds Day. Al-Quds Day. I'm sorry, two weeks ago. Jerusalem Day. The vitriol against Israel through the roof. Through the roof. Unbelievable. Yesterday we sat down with Rabbi Jason um, and we talked to him about the burgeoning anti-Semitism on a global level. We talked about the Middle East. This is all for Watchers 5, which should be coming out sometime in November, right before Christmas. Hmm, can we get think? I think not. But, you know, folks, it's crazy. Uh, the droughting, the droughts, the floods, the fish and animal die-off, which doesn't end, the weird signs in the heavens and earth. We interviewed Marshall Masters for Washington 5. You know, Marshall has a totally different worldview than I do. But, you know, if we only talk to the same people that have our worldview, we're not going to, you know, you're not challenged. So Marshall believes in the 2012 uh, Planet X theory. And we're going to bring Chris White in to refute that. And, and, you know, Chris, how do we know you're right? You know, and I've talked to other people uh, that have different worldviews, and that's okay. You know, and we brought Marshall in. We sat him down. He's a firm believer that 2012, or the, I'm sorry, that Planet X will manifest, appear sometime in 2012. And, you know, it's where the time is drawing down here, so we'll see what happens. We'll talk to Chris Putman and get a different answer. We spoke to someone about black-eyed kids over the weekend, specifically on Sunday. That person gave their heart to Christ at the end of the uh, interview. Can't ask for more than that. Can't ask for more than that. Anyway, folks, lots going on. Absolutely lots going on. And I want to give as much time as possible to Ghani, so I'll sort of cut the rant tonight a little bit short, and uh, we'll bring Ghani on at the other side of the break. And we have some questions here. LA at LAMarzuli.net, LA at LAMarzuli.net, or of course you can call the 800 numbers and I'll give you those before we do go to break. And uh, that way you can, if you want to get on the show tonight, you can uh, call the 800 line and uh, ask Ghani a question. Look, all I know, um, and as a watchman now for full time for four years, um, this is what I see. We are headed towards a cliff. And I can jump up and down and tell you all day long, and some people call me a fear monger, and, oh, you know, and we get a lot of negative email, but we get tons and tons of positive email from people, which keeps us going. But I look at what's going on, folks, and I have to tell you, I truly believe that we are living in unprecedented times, unlike any other. And I believe we are building towards a tipping point a climax. And I believe we're going to see something soon. I have no idea what that something is. War in the Middle East, dirty nuke going off in one of our cities, false flag terrorist operation, no idea. When it happens, I will be on the blog blogging about it, just like I try to do on a daily basis. Right now, we're sort of in, and everything is sort of static. 
The war in Syria, the civil war, which is which has killed thousands of people, continues. Assad continues to hold on to the reins of power. We heard today that Russians seem to be pulling out of their warm water port, which is unbelievable. Our intel told us that the, that's the last thing that we would see happen, and now we're seeing that. So we're not sure who to believe, what to believe. Things change so quickly over there. Who knows? Anyway, folks, our 800 number tonight is... 888-682-7688. Let me make this a little bit bigger so I can see without my glasses. 888-682-7688. You can also listen by phone. You can dial 832-280-08. And I don't have the last two numbers. Oh, my gosh, Rick, what are they? Producer Rick, are you there? Well, I don't have that one, nine folks. Eight. I stand corrected. Nine eight. If you, if you, what is it? Nine eight at the last two. Okay, zero eight nine eight zero eight nine eight 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 three two two eight zero zero eight nine eight. Got to go back and and correct that. Our our guest tonight is Ghani Shimura. Um, we've got links on my blog site, which is la marzuli dot wordpress dot com, and you can check out his podcast, which is canarycryradio dot com. Uh, the blog is Face Like the Sun. The YouTube channel has hit over almost 900,000 views on his um, on his presentation, which is absolutely amazing. That's that's amazing. So he's done his homework, and we'll bring him on right after the break. You are listening to Acceleration Radio. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. You are listening to Acceleration Radio on the Fringe Radio Network. Are you concerned about your financial future? Banks are failing, stock prices declining, and the government just keeps printing money. Eventually, our dollar will have little more value than monopoly money. Limit your exposure to the declining value of the U.S. dollar. Purchase gold and silver coins and bullion, which, by the way, has never gone to zero in value and is resurging. Eagle European Capital is your trusted source for gold and silver coins and bullion. A company based on Christian principles, Eagle European Capital strives to provide expert advice on which metals to meet your financial needs. They also offer free resources to help you become a prudent person who foresees danger and takes precautions. Visit our website at www.eagleeuropeancapital.com or call for your free consultation, one 888 Six two three one two three nine. You don't have to fear the future. Face it prepared. Call one triple eight six two three one two three nine today. Hello, radio listeners. Are you wondering how you will sell your home because you owe too much on your mortgage? Stop the worry. The folks at iBuyUnderwaterHomes.com specialize in buying your over-leveraged home. No need to foreclose or wait for a short sale. No more credit damage. There are never any costs to the homeowner. Go to iBuyUnderwaterHomes.com. That's iBuyUnderwaterHomes.com. Get a free private consultation and learn how you can move in in as little as a week. And this is L.A. Marzulli, where you're listening, we, you, us, whoever, is listening to Acceleration Radio on the Fringe Radio Network with our great producer, Rick. Our guest tonight is Ghani Shimura, and I met Ghani and actually uh, had a meal, shared a meal with him. We went and uh, sat in the booth in Branson and just the two of us and talked for about an hour, I guess, and um, I had salad. I think Ghani had a cheeseburger, and that's because he's younger and can still eat cheeseburgers. I envy him. But... Uh, and fries, too. And I'm sitting here with a salad. What's wrong with this picture? But such is life. And that 62, almost, I'll be 62 in December, I have to watch what I eat. But Ghani is still free to eat all the cheeseburgers he wants with fries. Of course, I'm not envious at all, which is why I'm bringing this up several months later. That doesn't bother me. You didn't cause your brother to stumble, Ghani. Don't worry. No, but I watched, I watched Ghani's, I watched Ghani's um, DVD today. And, it, and it's really a compilation of the work of, of well, myself, Doug Camp, Tom Horn, Chuck Missler, uh, Dr. I.D.E. Thomas. I mean, he's really done his homework. And then he, what, what's amazing about this, his DVD, which you can watch for free, amazingly. Why am I using the word amazing? Because it is amazing. Two and a half hours, almost two and a half hours, 
and you can go to his link, and, which I linked on the blog, and you can watch it for yourself. He's done his homework. He's connected the dots. It's, it's really an amazing presentation because it brings together a whole host of characters. Um, and you just don't, it's, it's difficult to, to bring all this information in and to make it coherent, to make it flow, to make, make, have it make sense. He brings Doug Hamp in and, and uses Doug um, um, throughout the, the DVD, which is sort of a connecting thread to it. But uh, without any further um, ado, Ghani, great work. Congratulations. Welcome to Acceleration Radio. Thanks, L.A. And you, again, you're one of those guys that helped me understand a lot of what's going on. So, And you're right, the, the video really is a, kind of a, a culmination of um, about two years of my life trying to figure out everything and um, tapping into this community of, of uh, believers that seem to be addressing the issue with a solid foundation in Scripture. And um, it made sense to me, you know, and it really did change a lot for me, and it really came, uh, made the Bible come alive for me and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I just wanted to create something where, like, again, there's one place where you can just get all the information. I, you know, I'm just regathering the information and presenting it in a way that people can consume, you know, hopefully, even though it's sort sure. of long. But, uh, yeah, that, that was sort of the goal. And I think, um, you know, we, we are, I'm, I'm starting to do Age of the Sea 2, and I'm doing the same thing. You know, I'm looking, I'm relying on a lot of these um, great researchers like yourself, L.A., and many others that are uh, really doing the dirty work. And, and I'm just sort of collecting it together and, and giving it in a way that uh, people can consume. And then when they want to go back and look up the individual researchers and go deeper into an individual mm -hmm. topic, they're totally free to do that, you know. And um, that's sort of the beauty of, of uh, this whole process. And, and, you know, you've really done a wonderful job of uh, compiling all the information. Let, let me ask you something. I, I just had a couple of emails today for people that, one woman in particular, who saw me down in um, uh, Oceanside at Calvary Chapel down there. And uh, it changed, she wrote me tonight, and it changed her life. I mean, and it's interesting. You know, we all learn from someone. And I remember when, when I read Dr. Thomas's book 25 years ago, that book, or, or thereabouts, that book changed my life. I mean, that, that was a game changer for me. That started me on the path I was on. And we're all building on, on you know, we're all kind of helping each other move forward. You know, we really are when you think about it. Yeah. Um, and there, yeah, there are I, certain I breakthroughs. Agree. Yeah, I mean, there are certain breakthroughs that, that, you know, one colleague has, and then, you know, we all kind of pick up that information. I think one of the ones which is interesting was when Doug Hamp came up with the same idea that the mark of the beast was going to be uh, a DNA changer, which I came through right. the, the same, the, the same discovered the same thing and put that forth in the cosmic chess match with the, um, but that was from the work of Dr. Roger Lear. So it's like, you know, I'm borrowing from I'm, Dr. Roger Lear is firing, you know, helping me get there. Hamps, you know, getting something from somebody else. And then you're taking that and compiling it. And I mean, we're all kind of working in this pool together. And the end result, which you've done so masterfully with your DVD, is to try to wake people up. What have you run into, Ghani? Tell us, um, tell us the good stuff first. Nine hundred thousand hits—that's amazing, amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm using that word a lot, but the DVD is amazing, folks. You need to check it out. Tell us the good stuff first, and then tell us what the naysayers, uh, the people, the emails that you get that that don't want to keep, you know, that want to keep their head in the sand. And don't want to be awakened. Tell us about that. Right. Well, um, the good stuff first, I guess, just the encouragement and the uh, just the kind words and everything that's. And I always point it back to the, my Creator, you know, because He's the one that's really doing the work. I'm just sort of, you know, uh, doing what what He's sort of shown me to do. But uh, I think just the, the building the community and relationships with people that have come out of watching the film or or you know, have, have thought about these things, but now it's in a place where they feel like their thoughts are represented, and that's just been really encouraging. And also, uh, Canary Cry Radio, which is um, me and my uh, co-host, Basil, uh, we do, uh, we started as sort of the, um, like continuing sort of the conversation in many ways from the film, because, you know, I could have made the film 50 hours, you know, and I'm sure, sure you feel that the same way with sure. your, your DVDs, LA, but, uh, 
you can, these things are endless. I mean, you can just keep going on and on and on about the information that's out there. Uh, but it really does no good after a certain point. You know, it's, it's sort of mm-hmm. making the same point. So I try to dwindle it down and keep things as concise as possible. Uh, you know, maybe a topic or two can raise curiosity in someone. Uh, and, and, yeah, various people from various backgrounds have told me that uh, the videos really open their eyes and help them understand and um, go back to their faith, go back to, to you know, looking at the scriptures and things like that. So it, overall, it's been a very encouraging process and uh, something that I owe it all to uh, God. So, um, But, yeah, there's been negative things, too, and I, and I think there's, uh, there's always going to be that. And uh, for me, it was a little bit of... Um, a learning process to be able to handle some of the, the heat. And, I mean, the first, I, I would say, like, the first month or so was sort of difficult after the movie came out because some people were totally amped about it, which was cool, but then there were these people that would uh, just completely bash everything, you know? And mm-hmm. um, it, it, it really got to me at first, but then I realized, like, hey, this is an opportunity to actually have that conversation, and I realized that's why I made the film is to actually talk to people about these topics because, number one, you know, I've come across so many different types of people. I've come across the ones that are really new agey, you know, the other ones that are really 2012 or, you know, somebody that's really into ancient aliens or just, a, you know, just an atheist or there's just so many different kinds of people with, with so many different views. Um, it's really made me into sort of an apologist in one way, um, mm-hmm, that sure. has to be able to sort of defend the faith, but at the same time show that, look, this isn't, you know, just philosophical jargon. There's actual, you know, proof, and in, in when you especially look at prophecy, um, I think that's really compelling evidence that there is some sort of, you know, uh, plan behind not just, like the, not, not just the evil things that are happening, but also um, the ultimate outcome of everything, which we know, and, and that's why we're not, we're not supposed to be afraid, you know, and I know you always talk about how people, you know, say you're fear-mongering and stuff like that, but the reality sure. is we, we, we don't have to be afraid of these things, um, but it's important to inform. And, it, and um, you know, I'm new at this. I've only done it a couple of years, and LA, you've done many more years of this, and I'm sure you're uh, far more experienced than I am on this stuff, but um, it really does sort of uh, build your... Uh, ability to research as well, I think, just because you have to make sure your stuff is uh, solid, you know, and um, well-documented to some degree and, and everything else. So, yeah, it's, yeah, I guess the negative stuff has been just learning how to deal and cope with the comments, and, and even that ultimately had a good outcome, so. Cool. Um, let, let me ask you something, Ghani. Yeah. What was the, when did the light bulb go off for you when you started doing your research you know i mean yeah. obviously it, it's like we all take small steps because some of this stuff just makes your head spin what what drew you to the subject and what was what was sort of the aha moment for you um i've really sort of been into just crazy uh scientific stuff or sci-fi stuff and and conspiracy sort of things growing up, just, I think just my generation was sort of exposed to some mm-hmm. of that through, you know, movies and, and TV shows and things like that, and, you know, I, I grew a, a very strong fascination for, um, you know, the idea of UFOs and ETs and things like that when I was 11, when I saw Stargate in the movie theaters, I was like, sure. whoa, <laughs> this is crazy, <laughs> um, and then 14, uh, around 14, I saw the movie Contact, and then, you know, it opened up a whole genre of several movies, of, you know, the very popular uh, movies with UFOs and ETs and stuff. But um, after I uh, became a believer in uh, Jesus, I sort of went backwards a little bit. I, I kind of um, I kind of put that stuff aside. And then, you know, I was like, you know, it's, it's, it's not really for me. And then about a year into it, uh, these, it was election year, it was 2008, and I was just like, man, I can't let go of the fact that I don't think this guy, Obama, is genuine, and I, I can't get over the fact that, you know, 9-11 was an inside job, and just some of these, you know, conspiracy ideas that are out there, but I couldn't reconcile it with Scripture, or seemingly at the beginning. I'm going, uh-huh. what, what's happening? Why is there, like, a disconnect there? You know, people at my church weren't really answering the question, so 
uh, I really started to dig and look for it myself, and what I found was that a lot of people that were addressing these issues were really uh, promoting an alternative occult uh, spirituality. And it, it kind of perked my interest, and I thought, okay, either they're right, or this other view from the scriptures is right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there was a real dividing line there, and, uh, you know, I just remember reading through the Bible uh, from the very beginning, you know, I'm a new believer, I'm going to read the Bible, and I get to Genesis 6, you know, <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, um, who are the sons of God, and who are the giants? And so that, that took me in a, um, a quest, obviously, to figure out who, who these things are, or what they are, and I would say you know, it really was, L.A., I, I owe a lot to you, because it was listening to Coast to Coast AM, hearing you on, and, you know, you, you use different terminology, which is, uh, it's, it's always fascinated me how you're able to pull that off. But I wasn't sure if you were talking about Yeshua, or you were talking mm-hmm. about sure. uh, scriptures or anything like that. But then I kind of, I went to your website, I went to your blog, and I kind of started to follow what you were talking about, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying, okay, this this looks like it's legitimate, you know? <laughs> I wasn't sure, but then I bought your books. Um, Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural was actually the book um, that sort of changed everything for me, because... Wow, I'm honored. Uh, I, I, Thank you. I, I, think, I think the same way that, um, uh, you know, Omega Conspiracy was for you, that, that book for me, because I flew through the Nephilim Trilogy, which was a fantastic book, uh, a trilogy of books, uh, just the storytelling, it's, it's great. I, I think it's... it's uh, <laughs> It, it put, you know, a realistic approach to something that's that seems a little crazy. You know, mm-hmm. the thoughts of giants and Nephilim and aliens and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it was reading that book that really just opened me up completely to the to this, re- this whole realm of research. And 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 then I heard you on PID Radio with, with Derek Gilbert, and that introduced me to the Revelations Radio Network. And, um, you know, the rest you can say is history because, uh, you know, I started listening to Russ Bizdar and uh, Chris White and sure. um, PID Radio, Derek and Sharon Gilbert. And, uh, I mean, that, that was really uh, a huge breakthrough for me. Th- those guys really did save um, what sort of was a crumbling faith. You know, I was really sort of doubtful. I wasn't sure uh, if this was the truth. But, um, you know, after, after looking at the research that you guys have done, it really inspired me to to get back as well, because, uh, you know, it really did help. And that's part of the reason also why I felt like putting together the movie was, was important. Um, just have something out there, because I, I was looking on YouTube, you know, every night trying to find stuff, you know, uh, YouTubing Jesus and the UFO, or, you know, <laughs> uh, aliens and the Bible, and, you know, just various combinations of these words that weren't fitting together in my head, you know. So, um, but yeah, I, I would say it wasn't one particular moment, but it was, a series of moments that, that sort of led to uh, like a gradual aha moment, you know, and it's still happening. I think it's still, um, I, I feel like the veil is being lifted still, you know, it's still kind of, I'm still soaking in a lot of information because, uh, you know, there's a lot of different views out there on, on prophecy and, and just, you know, the, the foretelling sure. of what may occur. Sure. And, and I've, I've really, really tried to make it a point to, um, look at all the possibilities and, and never shut out or uh, and you can certainly disagree with it but at the same time don't don't discount it uh, because we don't know we, you know we, we are not able to fully say one way or another how things are going to play out um, but the signs are all there you know there's there's more than enough signs to show that what's written prophetically is happening um, but uh, yeah I think it's important for us to uh, keep an open mind with other people's views and really try to um, consider all the possibilities. Uh, because I, I, my, my stance on all that is that, you know, once stuff goes down, um, the one that knows the most, or at least, you know, has heard of or studied the most number of possibilities will be the best informed of what's really happening. You know, because uh, I, if yeah. you're sticking too hard to one view, it, it's, it, it may be your faith shattering. It may be, you know, you never know. So, I just think it's better to keep an open mind about things of the future that we really, you know, don't know exactly how it's going to play out, although we know sort of the characteristics of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that's, I, we're on the same page because that's what uh, I also adhere to. I think that we need to hold on to our positions loosely 
Um, I'm not talking salvation and, you know, basic right. Christian theology, but some of these things, you know, for instance, there's a big brouhaha is the Nephilim only occurred once on the planet, you know, Genesis 6. They can't come back again. Well, you know, th th that's been a Donnybrook. Uh, and and right. it's, it's, that, that argument has become extremely heated in certain Christian circles. And I just sit there and look at it and go, you know what? It's not either or. It's both and. What, what's the problem? I mean, everybody just take a deep breath and, you know, look at what's going on. Let me ask you something, Gani. Um, yeah. You know, in your, in your, um, in your movie, you, you quoted – you quoted me, and I was very flattered by that. You know, UFOs are real burgeoning, not going away. It's sort of tongue in cheek, but when I and when I say it, you know, rebuke first and ask questions later, all that. It, it's you know, when you're speaking in front of a crowd, it, it's it's a bit of a buzz, and people take that. But the phenomena is not going away, and in fact, it is burgeoning, and it is real. People from all walks of life are seeing these things. What do you think the end game is? Where is this thing headed, in your opinion? And I know that you know you, you've you've cobbled a lot of information here together, and you've right. done a wonderful job doing it. Where do you think this thing is headed? Tell tell the audience where you think it's headed. I, I think, again, I, I try to stay open, but you know, I would not be surprised if there is some sort of alien intervention, or you know, recently in our podcast, Canary Cry Radio. We talked about Mars, and we talked about, um, it was a very speculative show, and people can check it out, and we, we, we go all over the place on the show, but essentially we sort of theorized that the reason why they're spending, you know, the two and a half billion dollars to get this rover of curiosity on Mars is to sort of uh, use as a crutch or sort of the uh, an excuse to, to, you know, officially, scientifically present that there was, um, you know, there's life on other planets and that, uh, there was an ancient civilization on Mars, and, uh, you know, who knows, all the, all the different conspiracies and theories that are out there on the, on the subject of Mars, but I really think that something like that is going to sort of usher it in, because, you know, it, it, it all works together as well with the advancement of technology and, and the push for singularity and the, the transhumanist movement, and uh, it seems like there needs to be even with all that stuff, there needs to be sort of an outside influence um, that's going to shock the world. You know, the world right now is sort of divided, and, and there's different ideas and different religious beliefs and, and different views on, on a lot of things. What's going to bring that together? There has to be something outside of our paradigm completely. And, uh, you know, although the speculation has been there, if they're able to somehow pull off, uh, you know, a scientific discovery, that reveals uh, life on other planets or an ancient life form or, or you know, whatever it may be, that's going to be played out as um, sort of the crutch of, like, a uh, one-world um, religion and an excuse for one-world economy and, you know, the Antichrist showing up and, and all that stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you, L.A., that there has to be something that completely changes the mindset of people. And uh, it has to be either a... A UFO, you know, like you always say, LA, my wide crash over the major cities, mm -hmm. uh, or or something just absolutely unbelievable. Like, uh, you know, some people like Peter Goodgame have theorized that um, Nimrod is actually going to resurrect, that he's actually going to, you know, they found his tomb or whatever, and he's, they're going to resurrect him. I mean, that, that would awe the world, you know? So there's various theories out there, but again, I think it's important to weigh in all the possibilities. But I would not be surprised if if I wake up and, um, you know, there, there's, there they are on the news and, and it just completely uh, changes the paradigm of, of the world. And interestingly enough, um, I, I was on Rob Skiba's show uh, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago now, and after the interview, which was a really long interview, I went outside to let my dogs do their thing and drink water and whatnot. It was pretty late at night. And I always look up. I, I always sort of look at the stars and... Sure. and you know, that's just something I do, just, you know, right. being someone that's curious about these things and, and whatnot. So I look up, and um, I see the three stars that are normally in the, the same location there. But I see an orange orb, and I immediately think, you know, no, that's not anything. That's probably just an airplane or something. But it's hanging there for about five minutes. I invite my wife out, and I'm like, hey, check this out, you know. And um, it's there for a few minutes, uh, and then it starts to sort of wobble. 
and and then it sort of slowly kind of moves away, and then it stops for a while again, and then it slowly moves away again until it was uh, out of sight. And you know, in my mind, I'm doing the rebuking. You know, I'm you know, totally going after it <laughs> uh, spiritually, just just in case. Uh, but there's there's a part of me that felt like it was a drone because it didn't do any any it didn't have the characteristics of a typical UFO. You know, from zero to sure. three thousand miles per hour, just flying away. It's, I didn't see any of that, but it was curious. You know, uh, it does kind of ca- in, uh, captivate you in that moment where you kind of look at it and you go, wow, is this really what I'm seeing? You know, this, yeah, this is definitely yeah. not an airplane. This is definitely not, what is it? You know, why is it glowing so bright in the sky and hanging there? And, you know, so, yes, there are more people seeing it. I just personally had my first, you know, I guess, sighting, if you want to call it that. Um, I think more people are going to have it. And uh, it, it's, you know, somebody, somebody is going to reveal the answers to all these things. And uh, whether it be literally a, a physical visitation or not, or just a, a major announcement of some kind, um, ultimately, yeah, I think it's for uh, for the system that has been predicted uh, thousands of years ago. Yeah, it's interesting. We, we, you know, you mentioned Mars, and we've got a rover up there. I mean, can you imagine if if that rover, you know, just swings the camera 180 degrees, and all of a sudden there's something that doesn't belong there, a structure, something. And, you know, th- that's a game changer. I mean, if they yeah. see anything up there at all, anything at all, really, I mean, and I, a lot of stuff on YouTube, you know, oh, look at this, there's UFOs. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just not convinced. But, I mean, if the camera stopped and there's a structure or an artifact that's just obvious, you know, you have to be an idiot, I mean, you know, to, to refute it. You, you, We all can see it's, okay, there's a building, there's a structure, there's something that shouldn't be there. That's a game changer. Right. Yeah, That's and it. it's it's really it's really interesting too because they landed, you know, the speculation about the face on Mars and, and the right, Pentagon, sure. uh, Pentagon and all that stuff. Well, you know, I did a Google Mars type thing to, sh- to find out where Sidonia was on Mars and where they landed, uh, where they landed the Curiosity and clear the other side of the planet. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Exactly. As far away as they like possibly can. Away. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was interesting and, you know, a bit ironic that they, you know... <laughs> chose the furthest point away from Sidonia. So maybe, you know, maybe they're kind of using it to, well, you know, we, we'll get to Sidonia in a couple of years and, and see if we can't, uh, you know. Well, I mean, it'd be really be, revealing. yeah, it'd be interesting to, you know, if, wouldn't it be fantastic if they had set it close to the thing? I mean, you know, you would think that with all the speculation, why not land it there and clear up the yeah. matter once for all? Oh, right. we'll just go to the other side of the planet. Well, hello. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, just amazing, yeah, unbelievable. Um, in in the movie, you tie a lot of what we're seeing now back to the figure that I call the mother of the New Age movement, Madame Blavatsky. Um, yes. Tell us about that. Tell us about her. Well, well, Madame Blavatsky. She was an author that uh, wrote several books, um, but she she had a book called The Secret Doctrine. And um, this book was, she was in the uh, late 1800s, and she, you know, she traveled the world and learned about all sorts of different cultures and sort of discovered the ancient mystery schools sort of on her own, and she was honored by the Freemasons, and, and uh, you know, there's all that documentation that I don't actually go into. If you watch Aquarius, The Age of Evil, uh, made by Keith Thompson, he goes into all that. Um, but, yeah, Madame Blavatsky and Alice Bailey are the two that I sort of focused on. Um, and Madame Blavatsky started the Theosophical Society, and Theosophy became this sort of prototype of a one-world religious system. And, and I find it interesting that um, the, the, the whole concept that's behind Theosophy, which is the ancient mystery school religions, ties into all the occult, you know, spiritualities that have been around forever, and it all goes back to Genesis 6, and it all goes back to the Garden of Eden. And I find that really interesting, because yeah. it's sort of, that, that really was the, the line that, that really stretched from the beginning all the way to now, and, and to make sense of, you know, the UFO phenomenon, and channeling spirits, and Satanism, and, you know, these different elements, it's all kind of predicated on this agenda that has been around, the, the, the biggest conspiracy is the one that 
Satan himself is trying to pull off, and and you know that's not that's not a theory. That's that's literal. That's that's why this world is kind of set up the way it is, and 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 I think the scriptures are very clear in revealing that. But um, but yeah, Blavatsky uh, definitely someone that I thought was a very interesting author. I tried to read through a lot of her work, and it was very difficult. I think partially spiritually, um, it was. You can just kind of feel it, you know, when you read it. It's like, yeah, I, oh, man, I, I this, agree. This is it's not, like, yeah, there's, yeah, this is not a, good for you. <laughs> there's a lot of double speak, and it's so ponderous at times. It's like you just yeah. want to throw the book on the wall. It's like, leave me alone right. with this absolute drivel, you know? My <laughs> gosh. And they and they really make things wordy, and and they go on yeah. and on and on. And, and a lot of times they claim that they're channeling entities while they're writing this. So sure. you know, like Alice Bailey. Uh, uh, it says that she channeled Dejwa Kool, which is this ascended master. And so, you know, and it's funny how sometimes they, um, when they talk about, you know, the books she's written and whatnot, uh, they always talk about how, you know, yeah, this spiritual entity wrote 19 books, and, you know, she wrote her own books, too, you know, like three or four other of her own books. But it's it's one person uh, doing all this, but uh, they give credit to the spirit, which I thought was interesting, at least on the Wikipedia page. But, yeah, that that to me was like a, a clear signal of, hey, wait a minute, these spiritual entities are telling these these people to write stuff down. Blavatsky being sort of, you know, one of the, I mean, I think it's always sort of happened, but as far as the the global structure that we're in now, um, and sort of the philosophy or even the spirit behind it, I think she was one of the first ones to start that. And then Albert Pike also was one of the people that wrote um, some very occult stuff, esoteric. In nature, where you know we know what's really going on with, with the Bible, we know what's really going on with all the religions, and uh, it's sort of this arrogant, um, you know, we we have the secret knowledge type of mentality, um, and I think that's that's sort of the key of trying to understand all this because if they're channeling spiritual entities, and they, the the people that are that are running the world, the governments, the economy, all that stuff. They're getting their information from these spiritual entities. It, it's it's too obvious to me. It's 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 like how can you not see that in light of what people understand of, of the prophetic text of the Bible? Because I mean, I don't know. It's <laughs> I get uh, flustered sometimes because it, it's it's one of those things where you see it so clearly and you sometimes try to explain it to people and it doesn't always uh, translate. And so that's that's sort of why I made the movie too is to provide a platform where it's like, okay, I don't really have to try to connect it with my own words. I can write it out, I can narrate it and make it into a presentation and they can go there. So um what was good the question? Job, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well that's I mean, you know, good, good job. We have a question here from um uh Catherine who writes in. Uh she writes, what are your thoughts about the opening and closing Olympic ceremonies? Oh wow. Yeah. We um again we did a podcast on the opening ceremonies. But that was extremely occult. Uh, it was extremely Illuminati propaganda type thing. And, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, everyone's talked about the lights and, and how they're shaped like the all-seeing eye. And, um, and, and the opening ceremonies, when I watched it, there were a couple parts where I had to start laughing. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You know, there was a uh, giant Voldemort that, you know, giant babies. And who knows what they really represent. But I think... Um, the, the message was, and this, and this is, I think, a very vital point as well, and, and the thing that really helped me understand all this Bible prophecy stuff, was that this whole world system, and, you know, we, we come off as really being fear-mongering at times, but this whole system is going to come about as the most peaceful thing to ever come about in human history. Sure, And sure. That's, that's where the, the deception is the strongest, I think, because... If it's presented as, hey, you know, this guy, this Antichrist guy, he's not going to be called the Antichrist, you know, he's going to go by some name. Um, he's going to come up with really unique answers to really, you know, things that have plagued humanity and, and society for a really long time. And, who's, you know, you'd be a fool not to, you know, buy into this system that is going to solve world hunger. It's going to solve um, poverty and, and all this stuff. So I think it's important to realize that um, yeah, those, those, it's going to appear peaceful. And one of the things, going back to the Olympic ceremonies, 
that was sort of the vibe I was getting. Like, okay, yeah, it's all this, you know, they're kind of cloaking it as uh, English history, which it was, but, you know, there's some right. dark history there, too. Um, but this whole idea of the nations marching together, you know, look, look at us, we're peacefully able to gather together and celebrate each other's diversity, and, and those are all good things, but I think it's going to be used to bring about this uh, world order. And I also think that part of bringing about that system is to make it appear like the old system is uh, it has crumbled, you know, because there's a lot of people who know about the Illuminati, who know about the conspiracies and all this stuff, that they don't really have a true solution. You know, they don't really have true hope or, or a true answer to all this stuff. And when when the, the current system gets gets uh, knocked down, they're going to be all about it. You know, they're going to say, oh, this new system is totally awesome. It, I think uh, Zeitgeist, moving forward, sort of does that with um, sort of a technocratic uh, society, like a socialist society system made by machines or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm sorry. Going back to the Olympic <laughs> and closing ceremonies, <laughs> I can go off on all sorts of tangents, but it's definitely, it was definitely a cult. It was definitely Illuminati. Uh, part of it also, I think, is important to point out is to not get too caught up in all the symbolism. Once you know that there's symbols out there and they use it all the time, you're going to start noticing it everywhere. And and soon you get to the point where you have to say, okay, it's just how it is now. You know, this is how everything is structured. You don't have to point out every time you see an eye on a billboard or something because it's that's that's you know, the beast is here, in a sense. You know, it's it's being built up. Uh, the throne for the Antichrist is being built. Of course, everything in media, pop culture, entertainment culture, it's going to represent that. It's going to reflect um, this new system. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't... There's definitely symbolism there. I don't know, you know, I, I can't tell you exactly what they intended or not, um, but I, I know for sure that it was definitely a message to the other luminous and also trying to portray to the world that, you know, hey, we're, we can attain world peace, that, that, that hope that we as men, you know, humanity can uh, achieve world peace. So, And that will never happen without the Prince of Peace, and we all know who he is. Exactly. exactly. Um, we have a question from Jay Ghani. Uh, he writes, hey, Ale, I totally agree with you guys about UFOs and the Nephilim. My question is, why do you think the fallen ones are manifesting themselves as the common-looking greys with big black eyes, and the idea is what the big eyes may be for. Good question. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think uh, there's, there's. I've heard various theories. You know, I've, <laughs> I've heard they're sort of like lenses. You know, they're sort of uh, they're biological uh, suits, basically for demons. You know, that they kind of yes. And I think perhaps you know all the cattle mutilation and all the stuff that even human mutilation. Uh, that has happened but don't really have true answers. Um, perhaps they're using those biological parts to create some sort of host body where the demons can possess it and um, and walk around and manifest and, and show up in people's doorsteps and tell them how you know awesome they are and how they're the chosen one to bring forth uh, the most important information from you know the data reticuli or whatever. I I I, I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you exactly what's going on with the black eyes, but, you know, maybe there's some sort of hypnotic uh, thing to it, too. Um, I know in L.A. in your book, uh, looking at the black eyes of the alien was not something you're supposed to do. Unless yeah, you're, yeah, you're never supposed to make eye contact with them at all. Um, yeah. and, and I want to make this real clear. The, the, the greys are not fallen angels. And you, you already, right. you know, you talk about these. We both believe that these are somehow constructed biological suits, which the demons, which are the disembodied spirits of a Nephilim, can inhabit. Um, and that's, it, it sounds far-fetched, and I understand that. But that's what, that's what I believe they are. Whitney Strieber and other people have been on the ships, and this is what they, they've seen. The, 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 like, they're like lifeless suits in drawers. It's like, what? How does that work? So anyway, but let, let's let's move on. We have another question here from um, Angel. Um, uh, he or she writes, Hi, first, I love both of your shows. Thank you. And I know Ghani thanks you too. Okay. However, why I do agree that something major has to occur to usher, is, to usher in the aliens. However, do you think that something significant has to occur among man and then the aliens come in to rescue us? If we are prepared to be unwelcoming, 
or uh, let me read that again. If we are prepared to be welcoming through introduction without a significant catastrophe, I think that man would eventually try to conquer instead of unite. Good question. Connie? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. And certainly, um, you know, one of the theories that I really uh, proposed, and Chris White was really the one that proposed it in the film, um, was that there's going to be some sort of chaos. Uh, uh, and, and what, you know, we always look at the Middle East and, and sort of the, the, the situation there, but ultimately it's, there's going to be a war or some sort of major catastrophe or, uh, you know, I, I think you're right. There has to be this, uh, something that's going to create the desire of the world's people to, uh, like you said, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the person asked the question there, I think Angel, um, to change or, or change the stance of humanity from divide and conquer to we need somebody. We need something to help us. Uh, somebody or something to help us, and that's a great time to to intervene, uh, especially if a nuke goes off. Or uh, and sure. I, that's I think partly why you know we hear all about uh, the UFOs that shut off the nuclear bomb tests and all this stuff. I mean, it sounds like you know a lot of people speculate and say, oh, it's because they're uh, peaceful aliens, and it's like, oh no, maybe they're just you know portraying themselves as peaceful aliens and trying to come off as like these world saviors. Um, but their agenda is not so uh, uh, benevolent, you know. Um, so, yeah, definitely chaos uh, before uh, the arrival of the aliens or, you know, whatever whatever they decide to use as the culprit to bring about the system. Another question here from Jerry. Uh, L.A., Ghani, what are your thoughts on Albert Pike's Luciferian prophecy of a third world war preparing the planet to receive Lucifer? Good question. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've read that quote as well, and again, you know, <clears throat> um, these these guys that wrote uh, the, a lot of these esoteric and occult writers, you know, I don't think they knew everything. Obviously, Satan and his demons, they don't know everything, uh, but, but they do understand a little bit. You know, they, they are spiritual entities. They're, they're far older than us. They, they know sort of how we behave, and... and and what, where we're vulnerable, and everything else. So they're always going to speak into uh, sort of the climate, and, and I, I'm sure they do their, their own sort of predictions, you know, to try to, uh, you know, g gain credibility with the human race. Um, you know, guys like Edgar Casey or uh, some of these other guys that have um, claimed to write down prophecies, um, with, you know, like Chris Putnam with uh, the, the Catholic prophecies and things like that. So... I think it's entirely possible that uh, the demonic entities uh, can influence sort of the, uh, I guess, the milieu or the mindset of, of the people. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, the other part that's scary is that, again, these world leaders are using these writings. Uh, for example, the Freemasons, um, and not all Freemasons are bad, but it's, it's just the whole concept, and I, I, I don't think I have time to go into that, but... Uh, you know, they're using these writings as sort of a blueprint for what they're supposed to do. And, and you know, so it's, it's, again, it's a conspiracy all the way to the spiritual entity known as Satan or Lucifer or whatever you want to call him, because he's essentially getting people to work for him uh, while they think that each person is fulfilling their own interests. And that's really where the deception is, and that's where the lies um, are many, many fold. You know, it's it's not just one lie. It's it's kind of a plethora, like a, a web of lies that is uh is is permeated all throughout culture and society and and um and you know, it's it's sort of hard to parse through all of it. But mm -hmm. um yeah, with Albert Pike and his writings and again, if they're using it as a blueprint, it's most likely some sort of self fulfilling prophecy, you know, where I think demons are trying to gain credibility. One more question, Ghani, then let's give you your uh, website out how people can go watch the movie. Um, this sure. is from Ben Clark, Johnson City, Tennessee. Ben, thanks for listening to the show. It's amazing. You know, we do these things. I'm sitting in my little office here, and I have no idea who's listening. And then you get, here's, here's Ben from Johnson City, Tennessee. It's just mind-blowing. What a <laughs> world. Um, hello, L.A. and Ghani. Are either of you familiar with Mormon end-time prophecies and how it may parallel or oppose real biblical end times and prophecy? Ghani? Um, I don't. I don't know too. I don't know enough about it to really 
get too deep into that. I, yeah, I will, no, however, right. yeah, I, I will, however, say um, I made an interesting connection today as uh, as, as uh, my co-host Basil and I were preparing for um, an episode that we're going to do here. Uh, what's interesting is that you know Mitt Romney and, and everything that's going on there. If he wins, he's sort of the poster boy of. He's going to become kind of like the poster boy of Mormonism, you know, and and so what's fa- what's fascinating to me is the fact that Utah, being sort of a uh, Mormon hub, um, that's where they created uh, the Utah Data Center, where it's you know they created the biggest data center in American history, where right, right. you know <laughs> countless amounts of information is being collected on everybody digitally and all this stuff, and and the show episode that we talked about is on. Um, what's called uh, a uh, well, a sentient world simulation. And essentially, the idea is to create a virtual world um, traced. Uh, you know, the data that's put in there is uh, a reflection, a mirror of reality, based on all of your transactions, where you've been, uh, all of your social media, your cell phone calls, your text messages, the websites you visited. Um, but ultimately. What's really creepy is this idea of a bio surveillance system that tags into it where where you really <laughs> have this dual existence, one physical and one in this simulated world. And, um, I, you know, I know we speculate on the show about how the mark of the beast could be even, even more than a DNA change. It can be literally like this DNA change that, that you guys have theorized along with some sort of um, entrapment in in a virtual world, you know. I mean, this is just way far out there, I know, but uh, <laughs> that's just sort of what I I, I I like to speculate. Looking at all the technological advancement happening, and and you know, again, the rabbit trail is deep because we went from Mormonism to uh, uh, you know, the mark of the beast somehow. <laughs> Donnie, we're down. We're down about yeah. We're down about two minutes here. Um, give us uh, the website. Give us your contact information so. People can get a hold of you if they want to. Sure, it's uh, it's uh, facelikethesun dot com is the blog. Um, I I kind of plan to retire the blog shortly and and just make it um, sort of a, a central hub to because I think uh, my focus is starting to go towards Canary Cry Radio and um, you can check out all the episodes there CanaryCryRadio dot com. You can uh, look it up on iTunes. Um, we're trying to get some likes and some comments in the iTunes. So if you guys have iTunes, um, look for Canary Cry Radio. Uh, give us a review and um, spread the word about that. Um, Ageofdeceit.com is the website that you can go to to uh, get all the same information there. Um, YouTube.com slash Face Like the Sun is where you can see the movie for free. Uh, the movie is available on Amazon if you want a copy of it. Um, but, you know, I, people have asked me, like, hey, you know, I just burned it onto a DVD and handed it to people, and I'm totally fine <laughs> with that, too. So, uh, what, you know, whatever it takes to spread the, the message, um, go for it. You have my permission. <laughs> Great. Gunny, it's been really great having you on the show, and we'll have to have you back, and uh, let's stay in touch, and I'd uh, just like to thank you for all that you do to help my ministry, too, and it's just been a pleasure having you on Acceleration Radio. Cool. Thanks, Ellie. That's it for tonight, folks. I'm your intrepid host, Ellie Marzulli. Uh, you've been listening to another installment of Acceleration Radio. Next week, Richard Grum. Don't forget, folks, we will be speaking in Ohio. Newark, Ohio, September 28th, 29th, and the 30th, Nephilim Mounds Conference. You want to be there. Russ Digitar, Richard Run, Fritz Zimmerman, and yours truly, L.A. Marzulli. Now's the time to sign up, folks. If you're in that area at all, you'll want to go to this conference. Nothing else like it. September 28th, 29th, 30th, NephilimMounds.com, NephilimMounds.com, NephilimMounds.com. This is Acceleration Radio on the Fringe Radio Network. I'm your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. And telling you and remembering to say, I'll see you either on the air or in the air. Good night, everybody.